What up you guys, Chef Billy Parisi here from BillyParisi.com and today I'm gonna to be making an incredibly classic dish known as brajul. Say it with me, brajul. Boy, when researching brajul, has it caused a ton of questions to come up because it seems like it's more American Italian than it is just Italian. Really, brajul as we know it in America is something called involtini in Italy. That's stuffed roulade, braised in a nice tomato sauce, Brajul in Italy is like a breaded pork steak or actual breaded steak that's pan seared and served up or cooked in a tomato sauce. Kind of similar, but honestly, when you look at it, it's different. I'm not sure what happened when Involtini made it to America and the word got changed into Brajul. I have no idea. Plus, there are so many different versions online. I've seen top round steak used, flank steak used, stuffed with pine nuts, stuffed with raisins, stuffed with herbs. I've seen a ton of different things when making an American Italian brajul. So I really just wanted to give my take on it because you know I've been doing a ton of research lately and the word that keeps coming up is simple. What's available? How can I make this taste good? So this version of brajul is gonna be incredibly simple and it's my take on what I would believe to be incredibly authentic. To start, we're gonna prepare our tomato sauce. So go ahead and add some San Marzano tomatoes right to your blender. San Marzano are those delicious whole peeled tomatoes. These are imported from Italy. San Marzano is a small town near Naples. Really is gonna add a ton of flavor to this dish and we're gonna keep it incredibly simple because after they are blended up, we're just going over to a cooktop and in a medium sized pot, go ahead and pour those blended tomatoes up. We want it to be pretty smooth. We finish it off with a little bit of sea salt, cracked black pepper. We're simply gonna cook it over low heat and let those indigenous San Marzano tomato flavors do the magic. While they are cooking, let's go ahead and go back over to your cutting board on the countertop. And we have a nice piece of top round sirloin. I'm gonna use this instead of flank steak. I feel like you could use either. Again, it's about what was available and what did they have access to as far as money is concerned as well. So I went with top sirloin. I feel like this can be a great cut and it's classically what is used as well. What we wanna do is slice these up pretty thin. I'm just gonna set them to the side on a plate because what I wanna do is pound these out. So go ahead and line up your cutting board with some plastic wrap. Let's add one of those thinly sliced top round steak fillets right to the center. Fold over the plastic wrap. You could also do this in a plastic baggie if you want and pound it out pretty thin till it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Once it is to this consistency, what I like to do is sort of lay them out on some parchment paper and layer them up, maybe three or four pounded out steaks per sheet until they are completely done. Let's go ahead and set that to the side because we wanna make the stuffing. Let's pause here because I wanna go back to what I said earlier. This is my take on a brajul because again, simplicity here. I've seen a ton of different stuffings, but I'm gonna go back to what I know. Italians love bread. They love different ways to use it, whether it's a panzanella salad or in a million, mil, bleh, milanese, milanese, milanese. And uh, what we're gonna do is use up that old bread because we've got breadcrumbs here. So go ahead and add those in. Next, we're gonna hit it with some Parmesan cheese. Hit it with some parsley. We're gonna add in some finely minced garlic. Season it with sea salt and cracked black pepper. And now we wanna drizzle in some olive oil because we want this to be sort of like a paste. So go ahead and mix it together using a spoon. And once it becomes sort of a little bit thick and pasty like, what we wanna do is sort of stuff up the steak fillets. Of course, we're gonna season the pounded out steak with a little bit of salt and pepper. Next, we're gonna add some of that breadcrumb Parmesan cheese mixture right to the top, a few tablespoons. And what we wanna do is sort of pat it down, get all those great flavors infused right to the steak and cover as much surface area as possible. And at this point, simply roll it up starting from one end to the other until it becomes like a roulade. That's really where this recipe comes from, like just a roulade. Roll it up, 
set it to the side on a sheet tray lined with parchment paper. What we wanna do is take some butcher's twine and simply tie this up one little knot. That's all we're gonna do. These aren't overly huge. We just wanna make sure that all that stuffing stays in the inside. So give it a little double knot, clip it off with your scissors. Boom, we're done. Season it up with salt and pepper. I like to have each phase properly seasoned so the final product is absolutely delicious. Head over to the cooktop. I've got a large Rondeau pot. If you don't have one of these, feel free to use a large frying pan. We're gonna add in some olive oil and on medium heat, add in the little brajoule roulades one at a time. And the goal here is to get them golden brown on each side. So think two to three minutes per side until golden brown. At this point, if you want, you can hit it with a little bit of white or red wine. This is just gonna help add a little bit more flavor. This may or may not be classic. It's hard to nail down whether or not this would be part of the original recipe. Let's go ahead and add in that tomato sauce that's been cooking on low heat this entire time. It smells amazing in here. The goal here now is to braise over low heat for one hour. So go ahead and add a lid to it. We're gonna let them cook. It smells amazing in here. You take the top off, all those wonderful smells come out. Looks incredible. Go back over to your countertop. Remember to remove the butcher's twine. That would be a terrible mistake to serve this up. With that still on it, your guests will probably not be too pleased with that. And to serve them up, I like to just have some tomato sauce on the serving dish. And I just add some of those whole steak brajoule roulades right to the top. To finish it off, we're gonna hit it with a little bit more grated Parmesan cheese and some fresh chopped parsley. Oh man, this looks absolutely incredible and the smells in this place are to die for. Fairly pretty easy recipe to make that honestly, it's great for weekdays. It's great to serve up to your guests on weekends. It's classic, few ingredients. That's always what makes these recipes so classic and so delicious. Let's not wait any longer, let's try it out. Whoa. I got too much going on here. Too much tomato, tomato sauce. Oh my gosh. Mm. Dude, that is so good. That's all I can say, it's delicious. Woo, the stuffing adds so much flavor. I'm not gonna waste any more time because you can see I've got some brush we'll eat. We'll catch up with you next week. See y'all later.